Love driving above all else? Then join us for a high-octane adventure along our most iconic roads. Drive TV puts Australia's top automotive journalists behind the wheel of the world's most interesting cars and sends them on the scenic route to destinations unknown. From smooth stretches of blacktop in a stylish sedan, sneaking dirt tracks in a sports ute or star-studded SUV adventures, we're on a mission to find you the perfect car for the perfect road trip. And with the way we move changing by the minute, we'll make sure you're plugged in to the new world of electric and hybrid vehicles. It promises to be an awe-inspiring journey with plenty of fun to be had along the way. Take the road less travelled, meet charming characters and discover breathtaking locations and let us introduce you to the cars, all while celebrating what's so special about the great Australian road trip. So jump in and buckle up, it's time for a drive. Absolutely, one of the fastest cars I've driven around here. And we've been on this road for about 30 minutes now. Golly gee, everybody, look at that. This week on the show, Sam takes a drive with the Ford Ranger Raptor to its natural habitat. Sky's the limit from rolling hills and country roads to unsealed tracks and an off-road racetrack. Here it is. This is the Ford Ranger Raptor. Personally, one of my favourite four-wheel drive utes. And it is an interesting one as well because normally, the utes like this, they are more about off-road capability in a low-speed sense. You test these things by loading them up, towing, doing the workhorse sort of things, but this thing moves the goalposts in that regard. This does have a bit of off-road capability, yes, but it's got some really trick suspension going on underneath there. I'll fill you in on all of those details a little bit later, but the side benefit there is that this thing actually has a lot of ride comfort and it really suits something like a bit of a road trip car, touring around the country roads and that sort of thing. That's not normally something you associate with a four-wheel drive ute, but this is a little bit different. The Raptor is the most expensive Ranger that money can buy, and it's made even pricier by this X variant that we have here today. On top of all the standard gear that a Ranger Raptor gets, this Raptor X is mostly about aesthetic changes. However, it does keep all of the good stuff that we love about the Raptor. 33-inch B of Goodrich all-terrain tyres, a unique and high-end off-road suspension system, heavy-duty wide side steps, upgraded seats and a unique interior treatment. Under the bonnet of the Ranger Raptor is a 2.0-litre twin-turbocharged diesel engine that is unchanged from lesser Ranger variants, and it makes 157 kilowatts and 500 newton metres. That engine runs through a 10-speed automatic gearbox with part-time four-wheel drive, low range and a locking rear differential. This all means that the Ranger Raptor is good enough for a 0-100k an hour dash in the double digits, 10.4 seconds according to our previous testing. That is not fast, and this Ranger Raptor would be theoretically a little bit slower than a normal Ranger. That is thanks to it being heavier and having taller tyres. We're going to put it through its paces on some nice roads today. We're heading out of town into the bush. There's some really nice sealed and unsealed roads. And at the end of that, we're going to transition onto what I think is the ultimate test for this Ranger Raptor. And that might involve an off-road racetrack. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be really exciting to see what this thing can really do in a dynamic sense. And we might even be getting a little bit of air under those tyres. So let's see how we go. Stay tuned, because after the break, Sam steps it up a notch and ventures off-road through the Wallamy National Park. Plus, 
who knew Baja wasn't just a place in Mexico. All right, through the corner here. Bit sideways, power out. We've got the jump coming up here. The Ford Ranger Raptor has this big tough guy persona, the big flared guards, the big tyres, the big suspension, all of that sort of thing. But one thing you might not realise about this four wheel drive is that it's actually quite a softy at heart. This thing has ride quality that other four wheel drive utes can only dream of actually. It's got a real suppleness to it, it soaks up bumps really well, it hasn't got that jiggle that utes often have because they're tuned for high payloads and that sort of thing. The bypassing nature of it means that the suspension is, at static height, extremely soft and it allows the suspension just to soak up everything underneath you. The body sits nice and flat and it's just really, really nice to drive. It's actually got a very premium feel to it in terms of that ride quality and it suits driving country roads, just like this one, really well. And because the suspension feels so confidence inspiring driving around, this Ranger Raptor feels much more enjoyable to drive than most other four wheel drive utes. It's more balanced in terms of the suspension feel from front to rear, you haven't got these really stiff leaf springs in the back, but this just feels a lot better overall. It's got more control, it feels good, you've got a much wider stance with this Ranger Raptor as well in comparison to other four wheel drive utes and even other Rangers, so it's more squat it's more balanced and the steering, all of that sort of thing feels really good. Big tyres are always great. These are about a 33 inch BF Goodrich all-terrain tyre. They're soaking up bumps, but it is the suspension that is the real star of this Ranger Raptor. So while you do have a reduced payload in this Ranger Raptor, it's for really good reason, because if you're not loading it up all the time, this might actually suit people down to the ground really nicely, especially when you're driving around unladen. So before we even get to the whole off-road racing side of things, this Ranger Raptor is already yielding big benefits for a touring four-wheel drive that's going to be handling rough roads. This is definitely a very comfortable four-wheel drive ute. While four-wheel drive utes did once used to be a fairly crude and uncomfortable implement built for hard work and load carrying, the modern day ute is a very different proposition. They're comfortable and well appointed. We're not off-road yet, but we have left the bitumen behind. We're driving on some unsealed tracks, heading north out of Sydney through the Wollamai National Park area. And I've got to say, this Ranger Raptor is feeling more and more at home with this kind of driving. There's not a whole lot different between a Ford Ranger Raptor and the X variant like we have here. The biggest thing is the stickers. You've got them on the bonnet here. They run all the way across the top and they're on the tailgate as well. I've also noticed that this Ranger Raptor has a new headlight design there. That's a little bit different from the first time the Ranger Raptor came out. 
There are some stickers here as well, just to change the appearance slightly. But overall, it's typical Ranger Raptor stuff. The grille, it's emblazoned with Ford. That's a typical thing. You cannot miss this car in traffic. And it's got the big flared guards also. This Ranger Raptor is much wider than a normal Ranger, and that's to accommodate all this trick suspension and a wider wheel track underneath. That suspension, the smoothness is still there. It's really taking care of all the bumps and jitters and that sort of thing you normally get on these kind of unsealed surfaces. And it feels quite confident to drive most of the time. You've got selectable four wheel drive here. So this definitely feels a lot more playful in two wheel drive in the tighter corners. You do start to slide around a little bit, but throw it into four wheel high range and it feels confident. There's a lot of steering feel going on there. It's a large car, it's soaking up the bumps. It feels really at home with this kind of driving. The engine, a two liter twin turbo diesel engine. It's the same as what you get in a Ford Ranger in most other guises as well. It hasn't got any increased performance and it, it's definitely not a powerhouse but it does seem to suit this Ranger Raptor overall. It doesn't feel slow when you're driving it. It definitely doesn't feel fast either, don't get me wrong, but it's pretty smooth and it's actually very refined and quiet in terms of putting down power. You don't need to rev it too hard, even though it is a smaller diesel engine. That initial turbocharger clearly kicks in around 2000 RPM and it does a quite a tidy job of getting this thing moving along. Coming up after the break, Sam goes Baja in the Ford Ranger Raptor. If I stay, get my eye in, cut a few more laps here, I reckon I can get this tail sliding even more. Welcome back. Sam's got the Ford Ranger Raptor in Baja mode rearing and ready to tear up the dirt tracks. Racing like this, you can only do it on an off-road course. It's very dangerous to do. It's got to be controlled circumstances, but man, it is a lot of fun. A lot of people say this Ranger Raptor isn't the real deal because it's only got a two litre turbo diesel engine. But after driving this thing around the track a few times, I've cut a few laps now, I don't really care because I'm having a lot of fun driving this car, going through corners like this. Tip it in, turn, full throttle. There it goes, catch it. Hey, This thing is awesome fun. Definitely need to put it in manual mode. You put the gear shifter back down one more below drive. And you use the paddle shifters here. You can lose them sometimes because those paddle shifters are mounted on the steering wheel instead of the column. So when you're opposite locking and that sort of thing around corners, you do kind of lose where they are if you want to downshift. I'm just a mug, I don't do much off-road driving, I'm not a professional, nothing like that, but I can sort of sense what the car's doing below me, and I'm not getting caught out, it doesn't feel too risky or anything like that to do silly things. Alright, coming up to a corner here, a little bit of a whoop, down we go, on the brakes, oh they're locking up a bit, down to second, turn in, throttle out, bit of sideways, keep going, this track is mad. Now in terms of driving modes, 
you want to be using a mode called Baja. If you don't know what that is, Baja is a place in Mexico. It's kind of the epicenter for off-road racing in the world, really. And this mode, it gives you a bit more freedom to slide the car through corners. It doesn't lock down on wheel spin as quickly, but it is still there to catch you. So if you start to get really out of shape around a corner, it will break wheels and it will cut throttle, which is nice to have a bit of a safety blanket there. So if you want to get really sideways and really out of shape, then you've got to turn it all off, which you can do, but hey, that's risky business, so that's up to you. All right, we've got a jump coming up here. Let's see how the Raptor goes. Top of third, into third gear, 70 k's an hour. A bit more speed we need, I think. 80, into 90. Ooh! That landed pretty well. This thing is absolutely eating it up. The star of the show is definitely the suspension. You can drive this thing quite hard and the harder you drive it, the better the suspension feels, which is kind of weird to talk about with a four wheel drive, but it's tuned really nicely. It soaks up the bumps beautifully and the body sits flat and nicely controlled on top. You can feel that the wheels have constant touch with the ground. You're not lifting them off all the time, losing control. And it gives you so much confidence to drive this four wheel drive ute like you've literally stolen it. Here we go through the corner, a little bit sideways. That's all right though. Man, this car is so much fun to drive like this off-road and you can't do it with any other four wheel drive on the market off the showroom floor. This is really amazing. And it shows that the Ranger Raptor is more than just talk. This thing definitely walks the walk. After the break, Sam shows us which way to go to undertake the same thrilling adventure. Sam's driven along gravel roads through the bush and has had some serious fun going Baja on an off-road racetrack. I think it's pretty obvious, but I've had a lot of fun today. We started with the rolling hills, the country roads, the long distances, and then we hit the unsealed tracks, the rough surfaces and the bumps. But no doubt, the ultimate test and the most fun that we had was here at the off-road racetrack. And this Ranger Raptor X did not miss a beat. It's been awesome fun and it stood up to the test, I think. 10 out of 10, in my opinion. After leaving Sydney, we're heading north, aiming for the area around Windsor and the Hawkesbury River. Our destination is Putty Road, via Colo Heights and the pristine Colo River. But to get there, we're taking the twisty and partially unsealed Commelroy Road northwards. It links up Currajong and Colo through some scenic, twisty and unpopulated roads. Even though this Ford Ranger Raptor is by far the most expensive variant and it's nearly $80,000 before on-road costs, that is a lot of money for a four-wheel drive ute, we still think it's worth consideration. That is, of course, provided you don't need to tow three and a half tonne and you don't need a one tonne payload. The $13,000 of extra asking price over a normal Ranger Wild Track, for example, I think it's well justified by the heavily modified and wonderful suspension that this Ranger Raptor has. You can read all about the Ford Ranger Raptor and the all-new Ford Ranger coming to a showroom near you in 2022.
head to drive.com.au or scan the QR code on your screen for more news, reviews and great drives. Well, we're all done filming for today and this has been so much fun. And while we are finished, I think I might stay though and cut a few more laps. I reckon I've got a few more seconds I can shave off my PB. Let's see how we go. Got any ideas on a great drive or special road that needs to be discovered? Let us know. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube to stay up to date and get some exclusive behind the scenes details and extras. And we'll see you next time for a drive. Next week on Drive, James takes the Havel H6 for a spot of fishing in Western Victoria. And it's one journey that won't break the bank. <laughs>